Hi, Troy, Steen. Say, I was really excited that I figured this out. It only took a couple hours, but uh, it's something that I, uh, I felt like would be helpful to learn. So um, hopefully um, I'm gonna solve the problem that you have. I'm pretty sure it is, so let's get started. So I have a blank project here that I just started and I'm just gonna walk you through because there's a bunch of things that I learned that I don't know if you knew or not. So let's go through them. So I got my main, I got my controller, and I got my sample. So I'm going to um, just get started by uh, creating um, the, uh, using the scene builder. And so I'm gonna just not use the grid pane because I saw a lot of people were not using it, so I'm gonna use an anchor pane. And so, but then I'm also gonna just put in, for the sake of the thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put in um, a label, and then I'm gonna put in a combo box, okay? And then, um, then we can get started. I'll show you what this is all about. Then, so my whole point in this is, I'm gonna try to, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna populate the combo box within the code. And then when you select on something, then it shows up in the label. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so the one of the first things that it's really important, and this is actually common, I have done some Android programming too, and this is what you have to do there as well. To be able to make everything, all the variables talk to each other, you have to do the following thing. So you have to go, you have to give each of these an ID. So you go to the code. So I've got the combo box selected, you can see here, and then see it's FX ID. So I'm just gonna give it the name, my combo box right there. And then for the label, there I got that FX ID. I'm gonna put in my label, okay? That comes in actually, that's super important to, to know because um, we're gonna use that a whole bunch. Okay, uh, just do a quick run and we'll see if we get anything. And there we go. Ooh, you see how this is like not the same as this? Okay, I figured out why that is. So watch this, you close it out and then you gotta go back into the main and this main section, um, by default, for whatever reason, they give it that default. So if you don't, if you just delete that, then it'll pop up exactly like you had it in the screen builder. Oops, I got rid of an extra parentheses there too. Now here's my sample, and then now see that like matches it perfectly. Okay, uh, moving on. In the scene, in the text of the scene builder, I want to show you something that's super important, and it's again something that my code wasn't updating the GUI, and I was like, why is it not doing that? So I fi I found something out. See this line seven? It doesn't. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So I don't know what it is, but it's kind of good that it didn't do it here because I want to show you what you have to do. At the end of this line, you got to put in the following thing. I got a space and then you have to do FX controller, FX colon controller. So I'm pressing that. And this tells you how to connect to this controller right here. So the way that you have to do it is you have to give it the name of the folder that it's in and then the name of the controller. So they actually supply you with like all the options. So I will actually want sample. So I'm gonna click on sample. So it says sample and then I'm gonna do dot and then it, it's giving me the options here and I have controller. So this is actually super important. Otherwise nothing will change other than like your main, your, your screen will look the same all the time no matter what. Okay. Another thing uh, I just want you to know, if you didn't know this, is you can rename these. And so I'm gonna, re I'm gonna refactor and rename. And by doing that, um, what I do is 
I can see that, see how that's updating right there. Now it says my controller versus my controller or controller before. It's all changed across the board. Okay, so that's that part. The other thing to note is you don't, this is, okay, this is the weird part. You don't do any of the coding in the start in the main, okay? Actually, all of the work that you do is actually in the controller, okay? So let me explain what's going on here. The controller class is actually called or it's instantiated as soon as the GUI is created. So you actually have to implement the method, you have to put a method in here. And the, the best way that, to do it is to force it. So you start typing implements and then what it is is it's initial, initializable. So I'm pressing that. Now, I'm not sure if you, how much you know about interfaces in Java, but real briefly, initializable is an interface. You can look it up on the API and it has one method and the method is called initialize. And it forces you by putting in this code right here that you implement initializable, it means that you automatically always have to have a method called initialize. So if I hover over the red error, error, I can say implements methods, and then you can see that's the one that I want to implement. So I click OK. And then now this was just imported, and that's where you're going to do all your work. Okay. So let's get to the real part. So the way to connect the FX, FXML to the controller is you have to create variables that match up. So watch this. This is what you got to do. You got to say at FXML, and then this is where you declare your variables. So I had a label. Okay, and this is super important too. There's like six different labels in Java, the one that we want to import is the Java FX scene control. So you gotta make sure that it's that one and it's not the AWT. Okay, private label and I called it my label. So bingo, right there what it did was it connected this label here with this word right here, label. So now I have to do the same thing for the combo box. So private combo box. Oh, I kept it all. Combo box. And again, I want scene control. That's that. And the name of it was my combo box. Okay. So that's that. Okay. Moving on. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the, the label just to sh actually, um, yeah, let me just do that. So I'm going to say my label dot set text to be, I try. And now when I run this, it says, hi, Troy. Okay, and um, I tested it with like a print line above this and a print line below it. And so it printed hello or whatever I had there before and then hi Troy. So that's how that works. Okay, let's do the combo box. So with the combo box, I'm gonna go with my combo box dot get items, which, okay, so this is what I learned, get items gets the items that are there and obviously it's empty to begin with. So it gets the items and then you can do the add. So um, you can do the add all, but I think in your case, you're going to be doing add one at a time. So that's what I'm going to do. So, and then I'm just going to copy that. And and then just put second and third in here.
Okay, so now the My Combo Box has these things on them, and so um, I should be able to run it, and we should be able to see them. Okay, so bam, there they are, first, second, and third. Man, how exciting it is for something so small, right? Okay, so um, I'm gonna add a couple things here. So I'm gonna add like a, like what it's supposed to say at the front. At the front, so it's prompt text. So set the prompt text, and I'll say choose one. Okay, so now it says choose one when we do that, and bam, there it is. Okay, and now. To finish it off, the whole point is, of this thing is like if you select something, you want to do something with it. So the way that you do it is you create a separate method, okay? And so I'm going to create a method right here. It's going to be a void method, and it's I'm going to call it when combo box is selected. And what I want to do when the combo box is selected is I want to set the text for the my label. So I'm going to say my label dot set text, and then I'm going to go to my combo box, get the value, and then you actually have to turn it into a two string. So you call the two string method. Okay. And then you say, oh, this is awesome. Everything's going to work. So then you, oops. So then you go ahead and run it. And you think, okay, here we go, choose first. Hey, it's not working, okay? And that's the reason why we put the code in the My Controller class, but we never told the XML to connect it. So watch this, it's, they make it really easy. So here I selected on the combo box, and then see this says on action. So now if I do a down arrow, it knows all the methods that are in the controller, and so I can just select that one, and it's gonna perform that whenever there's an action on the combo box. So, when I run this here, see it says, hi Troy, bam, there's first, second, third, whatever, okay? So, I think this is what you needed. Um, I'm pr pretty excited about it. So um, I recorded it so that you could so that you could look it over and pause it and stuff. So, okay, we'll talk soon. Bye.